when I first entered the field, uh, looking carefully at, I didn't know what Warburg had done. You know, working in epilepsy and mapping epilepsy genes and doing genetics, it wasn't really part of what I, only the fact that I heard of this guy, because he was a giant in the field of biochemistry. Everybody were, used Warburg apparatus in this. What happened? I went back and carefully, as a geneticist, don't forget, I, I'm a trained classical geneticist, so I understand genetics. And the, the, the dogma of the time was cancer was a genetic disease. Uh, and, and, if, and if there was any metabolic issues, it was due to the gene mutations were causing metabolic issues. But Warburg was essentially um, sidelined in this whole. When Watson and Crick discovered the structure of DNA, uh, the whole field shifted over there <clears throat> to, the, to the fact that we found DNA defects in cancer cells. And genes were co coding for all these different things. And there's an elegance about the discovery of DNA. And I always say biologists have a physics envy. Um, and they've had it for centuries. Physics is the pure thought, uh, the pure science of the human mind. Physics has always been the most uh, egalitarian egatali uh, field. They have an arrogance associated with them. And all other fields, even chemistry, is not as sophisticated intellectually as is the physicist. So when, when, when biologists discovered that DNA is the, and, everybody, and it was a very coded, quantitative, it became a qualitative science into a highly quantitative science. Now some of the physicists started jumping into the biology field because now it, it developed a little bit maturity and, and sexiness about it. And the field just massively went into this looking for gene mutations and cancers, thinking that this was going to be the management of the disease because once we figured out what these mutations did, we'd be able to correct them and correct the cancer. This led to the human genome projects and the cancer genome projects where we mapped every single mutation in every kind of cancer. And then it was so many mutations and so, so much complexity, they had to bring in uh, the IBM Watson machine uh, that could beat guys in chess and Jeopardy and let him try to figure out the cancer problem. And um, no one told Watson the machine that cancer was not a genetic disease. So this poor machine is burning circuits and smelling the wires are burning and he can't figure out what's going on. And he's, his recommendations at, actually put cancer patients at risk because there are a few oncologists that recognize this information was totally an antithesis to what was best for that patient. And the, the, the absurdity of the field is you're believing this, this ignoramus machine that uh, to treat patients and even some guys say this guy can't be right. But he can see, he can analyze a billion pieces of uh, gene sequence in like two seconds. But that's okay if cancer is a genetic disease. But if it's not a genetic disease, it's a complete absurdity. And that's exactly what it is. And they were paying two millions and millions of dollars to rent this machine out to the Broad Institute, you know, all these different cancer centers to figure out this stuff. And it was a complete absurdity.